Okay, hey, it is Mega here, and today uh, um, this is an installation video on how to install rear brake pads on your Suron Light B right there. So I, I got me right, right behind there. That's my Suron Light B with Supermoto setup, but it doesn't really matter what wheels you have on your bike. Uh, we'll be installing these EVC brakes. If you want to know more, more information on these brakes, uh, check out uh, another video, uh, a video overview of these brakes uh, later. Um, uh, I went with EVC brakes because I know they're good stuff because I use them on motor. It's, they make motorcycle brakes and stuff, and like brake kits and stuff. So, uh, so that's why I went with EVC brakes. Uh, I went with Shimano for the front one. So, but we're going to be doing the rear. Uh, the purpose of this video is to replace the um, the brake pads on your Suron Light B. Um, the rear, the, the rear ones in specific. I have another video if you want to learn how to do the front ones. It's pretty much the same process but it's on the rear of the bike. It's a little different. So that's why I decided to make another video. So uh, if anything, I think it's easier to do the rear. So, all right, let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brake pads out of the package. So there it is. So these are the uh, gold, uh, gold compound pads. They're for Shimano Saint M810. So um, any pad for that says Saint Z or M810 will work on your Suron front or back. So, so there it is, EBC brakes. There's a part number right there. Um, check out that video um, if you want to thing them. If you want to take a look at them, but uh, we're just gonna take them out of the package and see what we got. I'll probably add this clip to. Uh, for other videos. So. Oh, okay, there's a little, I don't know, but the pads are in the front, so, okay, so we're just gonna put the front out, and there's this little foamy thing here, and that's pretty much it. So, what you get is a pad, another brake pad, which is identical. I think you can flip them if you want. I'm gonna go something like that, and you get a spring clip there. So, I believe the Shimano one came with a cotter pin. But we don't need a cotter pin for the Suron, and I'll show you. We'll, you'll you'll see why in a bit. So there you go. That's what you get. Um, we'll probably probably just reuse the spring clip. It'll be good to have extra parts though. So all right. Okay. So we're gonna be working from this camera angle. Um, so what tools you're gonna need to do this are uh, a three millimeter Allen wrench and a five millimeter Allen wrench. And I choose to use T handles. You don't have to use T handles. But um, so the the best thing to do would be to uh, your, to remove the caliper. You're going to have to loosen it anyways to realign it and everything. Um, yeah, mountain bike brakes are kind of weird. So, but uh, if it's anything like the, the front, it should be pretty easy to work with. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take out this clip here. There's a little clip over here, back here, and then there's a there's a pin or a screw holding the pads in there. So pretty easy to take out. Okay, let me, so let me get, get, take this little clip out. Um, comes out pretty easily. You can just do it by hand. It's kind of like a little C clips type of th deal. Put that somewhere safe so you don't lose it. And then you're gonna have to take your three millimeter. Take your three millimeter here, and just unscrew it. What you might want to do is get some kind of grease, also some kind of automotive grease. Take the pin out. Okay, put that somewhere safe, and then your pad should just come straight out. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably just the camera a little bit. What you're going to want to do is pull up on this. Oh, what you might want to do, hmm, yeah, what you might want to do first before, yeah, before, okay. before we take let's, the pads uh, out, shift our focus to the handlebar here first. Uh, what you're going to want to do first, uh, before you take the pads out, is uh, you're probably the first thing you want to do is loosen your adjustment nut here on your 
very clever. And it'll for the rear, it'll be the left one. Unless you you did it the other direction. I don't know. Just want to make sure to take up all that slack out of there. And it'll make it easier to take the pad. So you can see the, uh, the lever moving back. It's taking all that slack out of there. These are brakes that need adjustment all the time. <laughs> okay, so it should be easier to take these out now. Okay, so now try to take them out. They should be easier to take out. Just kind of pull up on them. Pull up on the spring clip. Oh, they just fell out. Okay, it's kind of stuck in there. The spring clip is stuck. So one of the pads fell out. Oh, and as I, as, as I suspected, there is no more pad left on this. That's why. That's why our brakes don't work anymore. And go ahead and try to fish that other one out. Um, what might help are some, uh, some kind of pliers. Would help. Take this one out pretty easily. Okay. So that one still got some meat on it. It looks pretty beat up. Um, so, oh yeah. So, uh, so before we go any farther, I just want to point out that uh, um, when I took these pads out, um, I, I mean, the reason how I knew the pads were bad was because one day I was riding, and then, well, I started noticing like a, a kind of grinding sound when I when I applied the brakes, and because of this one or one of these. It's all it's all metal to metal now. There's no pad contact anymore. So there's like no more pads left on these. I've been riding this bike kind of hard as you can see. <laughs> um, but uh, the reason I I uh, I noticed that the pads were well well while I was riding along and then uh, the rear the bike just seemed like it it I let off on the throttle and the bike was just slowing down really fast. I was like, wow, that's weird. The regen is like really strong and and it wasn't. It was a the brakes had seized, so the the pistons, when um, if you let the the brake pads wear out too much, the pistons could get stuck in the you know in the biting position and in the clamping position, and then I saw like smoke started coming out of the brakes and and it wouldn't thing, so I had to go get I didn't have any tools with me, so what I did is I took the key, I took the freaking key, or I took my house key, and I just kind of levered it in there. To, to push the pistons out so so potentially that could that happen if uh if your brakes become too low um they may get they may seize because because uh, i guess the piston sticks out too much and then it, like it won't, won't it don't want to go back in so so uh change your pads before that happens um it's really hard it's kind of hard to tell how much pad you had left if, especially if there's like no pads but um just get a flashlight in there and just look for in the top that's how you know they're worn out, or or just take them out like like we did just now. Um, just you know, take the clip out, take the pin out, and then uh, and then pull the pads out, and then just stick them back in if uh, you know. But yeah, that's definitely uh, no pad left. Those are those are garbage. <laughs> These go in the garbage. No good, no more. All right, so uh, what to do now? Uh, take that spring clip out. Okay. So as you can see, the spring clip. Ah, oh, so now I know what that noise was. So that's what that scraping sound was. The spring clip getting caught in the in the rotors. So it kind of kind of tweaked it a lot. So I think what we're going to wind up doing is uh, we're going to wind up using the new spring clip. So uh, maybe that's how you know it goes bad when the spring clip touches the thing and it gets messed up. So so that's what that sound was. Um, I was hearing the rotors don't look too too scratched up or anything though no, it look fine so okay so what we're gonna have to do next is uh, we're gonna have to push the pistons back in um, and to do that I suggest you just take the caliper off don't don't bother uh... okay and then you're gonna have to realign everything anyway so take your five millimeter allen wrench and go ahead and loosen this take the, just take the screws out so you can take the pads out I'll take the caliper out. It's kind of better if you use a normal Allen wrench rather than a T handle.
in your if your brakes ever get seized, what I was thinking is if you if you, if I had an Allen wrench with me, I would just take the caliper off and then like zip tie it to the swing arm or something. So I wouldn't have a rear brake, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be dragging because I was like, man, I might have to call a tow truck, you know, if uh if I uh, if I can't get this bike running because like the back was like locked up, it would just freaking caught on fire or something. <laughs> destroyed the brake rotor so don't don't keep on riding if your pads are low i've been on a strict no rear brake uh no rear brake on the on the light b so all right there that came out pretty nicely um so now what we got to do is see there's these there's four pistons in there Let's see there's two on this side and then two up in there it's kind of hard to... Let me get my... okay so you'll see two pistons there's two here and two here, um, so you're going to want to push those back in. So a good way to do that is to get some kind of like a tire iron or something. Okay, I'm going to attempt to use this tire iron to push the piston back in. Just get anything you can to try to push it back in. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm probably going to just twist this. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there's no real easy way to do this. <laughs> Other than this, you just gotta push it back in. This one looks like it's stuck. As I guarantee you, it will not work if you don't. It, it will not fit in there if you don't push the pistons back in. You gotta do it. Oh, this one's stuck. Maybe this is our stuck piston. Okay, yeah, all of them seem to want to come in easily except for this one, so I think I found out what piston is stuck. Let's see if we can try to force, force it. Okay, there we go. Okay. So the other ones may want to go back out when you push the other ones in. So there you go. I was able to push them in, so you can see they're they're way in there compared to how they were before. Let's get a brighter light in there. They're pretty much flush. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Let's try to get them in there as much as possible. Uh, like I said, what I use is a tire iron. This is a tire, a small tire iron for a motorcycle. Uh, or you could use a pry bar. Or you can use a flathead screwdriver, it will probably work also. So, But this works pretty good. It has a little curve to it, so it gives you a little more leverage. All right, so the uh, this guy is in right, there so now. So what you want, might, might want to do before you uh, you uh, put your pin back in, or before we start putting everything back in, go grease the pin that you're supposed to put in. Put back in. Make sure you don't lose this pin, too. Just put a light coat of grease on it. And then uh, that way it'll it'll slide and stuff. So okay, here we go. So now that you've greased your pin, go ahead and take your uh, your brake pads and put them in the spring clip already. So all you have to do is just slide them in. Like that. And you just want to sandwich the, the spring clip between the. Between the two pads, make sure the spring clip is around the uh, the brake pad material, not the not the metal part. It's a little it's a little tricky to get it in there. But what you want to do is you want to make sure all these holes on the top line up for the pin. Okay, got it. Take your caliper. Okay, so. The best thing you do, I notice, is to just drop it straight down in there. It's designed to really only go one way, so slip it in there until the holes line up. Okay. Okay, there's the hole. So go get your pin, stick it in there. Actually, um, stick your little Allen wrench to. What, what's this? this? This is a two millimeter right here that, it, that you use to adjust the brake lever. 
stick it in all the way first to make sure it all lines up okay and then go ahead and pull it out and then put the pin in because the pin is like an exact size so you may have to finagle it a little bit there we go So one of these pads, it's not lined up, like I said, if you finagle it a little bit. Okay, there we go. At some point, it'll go all the way. <laughs> so just, it's, the, the tricky part is getting all the, the holes to line up. You, technically you got one, you got like four, you got like six holes that you need to line up. And then go ahead and then just tighten that in there a little bit, very lightly. Okay, and now your pads are in there. So now what you're going to have to do is make sure you can, you get the, when you put it back, you put the rotor between the two pads. So it's best to look back here. Okay, uh, boy, is that a tight fit? <laughs> okay, and then now uh, go ahead and put the screws back on. Okay, so it pretty much kind of just realigned itself already. I got a better tool. <laughs> Get the five millimeter uh, wrench. Okay, I think I think I might have mixed the screws up because uh, because the, the blue marks don't line up anymore. So the at the factory they leave these blue marks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch them backwards so we can at least line up the blue marks. Okay, so you're gonna want to put your screws back in. I kind of got one of them in. Put the other one back in. Notice I just I got the I got the proper tool out. <laughs> the T handle hits the wheel, so okay. Okay, so now it should be kind of loose. Um, okay, so to align it, what you're gonna want to do is squeeze the uh, the brake lever, and then. That's one way to do it. Is this? So if I'm gonna squeeze the brake lever, and you're gonna see it move a little bit. See, it kind of moves the other way. So just squeeze the brake lever, and then start tightening the, the screws. It's funny my blue marks didn't line up. One of them did, but the other one didn't. Okay, and that should be it. And then uh, go ahead and put your uh, put your clip back in. There's a little, there's a little. So there's a the two uh, two kind of prongs, and then there's a slot in the screw or the pin. There you go. It's a nice design. Okay. It looks, I, I feel it's a little too easy to take out though. <laughs> okay, and just kind of just snug this down a little bit. Doesn't have to be super tight. That's why you got the pin there. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, he's gonna finally got himself a dirt bike stand, so I'm gonna go use it. <laughs> so, so uh, go. I I went. I had to put it in a stand so the wheel kind of free wheels. Just make sure it kind of moves so it, it does move it's not it's not it may drag at least at, at first the pads kind of have to get broken in a little bit um, and have to shave a little bit off and then so what I'm gonna do is give it a little throttle okay, okay. 
So I, I notice it's not it's not stopping it super fast, but uh, that's probably because your pads need to be broken in first. So um, you probably what you're going to want to do is uh, just uh, ride ride your bike and then brake hard, like once or twice, really hard. Go go try to go full speed and then brake really hard and then slow down and speed up again and then brake again. And that's that's how you can bed the pads in. Um, so what you're going to want to do. Uh, what you're gonna want to do next after you get it installed is make sure make sure your lever is adjusted properly um, if uh, if this if it feels like it's dragging which I don't think it is let's see in there it doesn't look like it's dragging I mean it's touching but it's not like it's not like biting onto it you know uh, it's kind of harder to check on the on the rear because you got the drive train on there. So, okay, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, um, you're just gonna have to adjust this how you want it. If you feel like it's kind of dragging a little bit, go ahead and uh, d just try to realign it again. Um, take your five millimeter uh, wrench, loosen it, give it uh, give it break. And it should kind of like line itself up by itself. And while you're breaking, go and tighten these screws. And that's all I did. So, uh, and then you, what you might want to do somewhere along the line is kind of take the pads out and kind of inspect them to see how they're wearing. Um, if it's getting worn more on one side than the other, maybe flip them around. You know, uh, that's all I can say. But uh, but there we go. Uh, so my uh, my Suron Light B is now fully mission capable again. So. <laughs> So that's okay, how you so go ahead and do it. The is to torque the calipers. Um, it's, I think it's somewhere from like 9 to 10 newton meters. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and set my torque wrench at. Probably like, we'll do like 9.5 or something. Just to do it, you know, by the book. Even though I really, I kind of technically don't have the book. There is no real service manual for the light B. Uh, all right, so. Go ahead and torque this. Which I can't use this one. I have to use a longer one. Okay. I have to use a longer one for the for the back one, unfortunately. Okay. There we go. So you can kind of tell. I don't know. For some reason, the rear painted. So there's some painted marks that they have at the factory. And you can line up the painted marks. For some reason, the, the painted lines don't line up all the way anymore. This one is like way back here. And this one is like a little bit forward now. But um, if you just match those, then you'll be okay. But mine are like almost gone. So <laughs> um, nine to ten newton meters should be okay. Uh, if you want to torque it, um, if not, just make sure it's snug. You know, you don't know, don't want your brakes falling apart. So what you should probably do now is uh, take it for a test ride. All right. Here's my gap. Hope you guys learned something. That's how to uh, replace the rear brake pads on your Sauron Light B. Yeah, I feel that is. There's probably you could probably uh, put the pads in from the top if the if the caliper was installed. Um, yeah, if you wanted to put the the pads in from the top like this, I think it's harder though because you you kind of have like it's kind of rub. Every, there's a lot of rubbing going on. Plus the pads like there's not a whole lot of space in there when you got brand new pads. So. Um, so all I'm going to say is like when the pads wear out, eventually the, there's going to be a lot of play in the lever. So you adjust that play how you want it, you know, but I'll tell you this, um, if there's not enough, if you don't got enough bite, it ain't going to bite hard enough, man. And I had a race, uh, I was doing a race and suddenly the brakes stopped working. So all I did was I tightened that nut right here or the bolt right here until there was, there was less play. So I can get a lot more leverage in there. So, so yeah. So over time, you're gonna have to adjust this, but don't adjust it too much. Don't adjust it so much that this that it, the the brakes are dragging when you're when you're riding along, because that's no good. You're gonna you're gonna wear out your pads. You may you may sm um, they may start smoking. They may catch on fire. You know. So you don't want that. Uh, so don't don't adjust this too much. Just make sure you adjust it. So just adjust it so it it still it rolls smoothly so. all right so and if it's if it's a little tight when it's brand new it is probably just you have to wear them in you know a little bit so 
All right, so that was the, uh, we installed some EVC brake pads on the rear of my Suron Light B. That's how you do it. Uh, like I mentioned, you could probably, you could probably install it from the top with the caliper installed, but the way I chose to do it was I just took the caliper off and then I dropped it in. And then, and then I aligned the caliper to, uh, when, when I reinstalled the caliper, I aligned it with the, the disc brake and that seemed pretty easy. So, um, I think the trickiest part, yeah, dude, the trickiest part was, uh, was trying to get the pads to go in straight down. Like really they'll only go in there one way. If you get it at a little, if it's, a, if it gets a little cockeyed, it won't go in. It, it wants to go straight in there. So, um, so yeah. Um, that's the tricky part. The pads like they just fit in there like just right and if you put them in there like a, a little bit of angle or crook it or something it, it won't go in. Um, I had to practice a couple times. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, for some reason it seemed like the rear is harder than the front. The front was it's not that hard <laughs> in my opinion. Um, but yeah so if you want to know how to install the the front uh, brake pads I have a video uh, I have a video for that so uh, um, I'll put it at the end of this video also. So but that it's that's kind of what you're getting into and the tools we used were uh, the uh, three millimeter three millimeter five millimeter allen wrench I use a tire iron you can use a screwdriver or uh, or pry bar I, I use a torque wrench you don't need to have a torque wrench but it's a good idea um, you know you want to do things right and then I use some pliers to take the pads out because they were kind of hard to get out of there um, and we did have to wind up using the new spring clip because I kind of screwed it up <laughs> now, this is what happens when you use your when you eat up the brake pads all the way um, it may damage the spring clip so you can see it's been rubbing on there that's what that scraping sound was so that is a garbage now um, all right uh, and we found out that it is easier to take the caliper off with a five millimeter regular, you know, L looking type wrench than the T-handles. So, so it, uh, those are all the tools that we used and in the end. All right. I hope you guys learned something. Oh, and I use a can of grease um, to, to grease the pin. Good idea to grease the pin because stuff moves around and stuff. So it helps protect it. All right. Here's my out. Hope you learned something.